They say every family has a skeleton in the closet, a secret that's tightly held and almost never revealed. Maybe just one person knows a secret, maybe a few, or maybe the whole family has sworn to keep their silence so that the outside world will never know. Maybe your family has secrets just like this. I went to Reddit and I found people telling their stories. Some of them are truly shocking, but strangely fascinating at the same time. You'll see what I mean. My name is Danny Burke and this is the top 10 scariest family secrets. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Grand Dragon. This one comes from Betamax V2, who said, A great uncle of mine passed away when I was a little boy. The family met at his house after the funeral to start packing things up and all, as he had no children, and his wife died many years before him. My great uncle was a highly respected member of his small town. He was a banker of some sort, deacon in the church, and all those things that made him a good person. Well, tucked away in the attic, not covered by any dust, mind you, was a large wooden trunk. Inside this trunk were the purple robes of a KKK Grand Dragon. Various member listings, meeting notes, and all other sorts of things related to the KKK. Turns out that my great uncle was a very active, although very much secretive, member of the regional chapter of the KKK. Okay, I think uh, we've already started up here with this video. Can you guys even imagine finding out that your relative, someone who was respected and loved by his family and friends, was a member of the KKK? Probably the most famous white supremacy group of all time. I guess you'd have a lot of questions after that, especially for your family. Like, how didn't they know? Moving on to number nine now, we have The Milk. This one comes from Klein Boy, 1987. Now he said, my great grandfather hit his wife with a fire poker and slit her throat. He then proceeded to blow his head apart with a shotgun. He sat down in a rocking chair and used his cane to push the trigger, all over an argument of whether it was too cold for me to walk to the grocery store to get some milk. That's it. That's the whole story. That's everything. There's nothing more to help us try and wrap our heads around what happened here. The couple were arguing over whether this storyteller would be alright getting milk due to the cold and he murdered her over it and then killed himself. Now I'm guessing by the fact that they're referred to as great grandparents that they were pretty old when this happened. What would cause someone who's been in a marriage for decades and decades to just suddenly snap like that? I think there's more to this story, but honestly, I'm not even sure I want to know. At the number 8 spot now, we have Dog Heaven. This story comes from New Arpheus about his wife. He said, My wife and I were reminiscing about our childhood pets one day. When I shared how hard it was when my cherished dog had to be put down, she got to thinking. All of her childhood dogs were killed by semis. Now normally, the thought of a dog getting loose and being run over by a semi truck isn't that far-fetched. However, it had just clicked with her that her childhood home was in the countryside, down a long gravel road. The nearest highway was really far away. She decided that the next time she talked to her dad, she would find out what really happened. After all, now she is an adult and can handle the truth that a seven year old couldn't. Well, her dad just sort of smiled at her and said, oh honey, I never lied to you, but childhood dogs were indeed hit by a semi, a semi-automatic. Yeah, a semi-automatic rifle. Now, to be fair here, it sounds like her dad was putting down the dogs when they were old or very sick instead of taking them to the vet to do it. I hear that's more common in certain rural communities around the world. I'm passing no judgement here. I just thought it would be a shocking story because she genuinely thought they were all getting hit by semis as in semi trucks when it was actually semi automatic rifles. It's quite a big difference between those two things. Next up at number 7 now guys, we have The Judge. This one comes from Things Things thing who said the real reason my aunt moved back to my hometown was she was briefly kidnapped by some bad guys she displeased in her work as a judge. The guy held her at gunpoint and told her she could either leave town in the next 24 hours or be taken back in. I was like 8 at the time so everyone just told me she moved back because she missed us all. I found out about it when my brother and I were rehashing old stuff 10 years later. Now I'm sure all the adults in this family had mixed feelings about the auntie returning. Yay, auntie's back in town for good because she misses us, but oh no, it's actually because she was told to leave at gunpoint where she worked as a judge. That's really scary. It's also kind of scary to think that some criminals can subvert justice like that. 
Maybe you guys think this is exceptionally rare though. I hope it is. Moving on to number six now guys, we have The Other Child. This one comes from Egg Coroner who said, I just found out that my grandparents wanted more kids but were having trouble getting pregnant for a second time. They adopted a toddler aged brother and sister when my mother was seven. Soon after, my grandmother got pregnant. The girl then died from a very mysterious fall down the stairs and the boy was quietly given to another family. They never ever spoke of either child from that day forward. I thought she was pulling my leg, but a quick search turned up the girl's death record. I was never close to that grandmother and can't help but think back to every weird aspect of that woman and all the strange relationships she had with her family. Wow. That one is really crazy. I think what the storyteller is trying to suggest is that when the couple finally did get pregnant, they then didn't want their adopted children anymore. And so they staged a fatal accident for the girl and just sent the boy away forever. That is really dark. I presume that it was their mother who told them this story and they thought, there's no way that's true. You must be pulling my leg. But yeah, I don't know, man. I've never heard a good joke that sounds anything like this. Coming in at number five now, we have the photos. Conte Vincero said, we found a picture of two great aunts arm in arm with Hitler. We also found a signed photograph of Mussolini. Yeah. Their great aunts were apparently best mates with Hitler. What an awful surprise to find out. I mean, the scary thing about this story is pretty clear. I guess the only positive to take away from it is that maybe their grandmother wasn't all chummy with Hitler. Maybe it was just uh, two sisters I'm clutching at straws here, I think. As for the signed picture of Mussolini, I think they should sell it and give the money to a nice charity. That's something that would have really annoyed him. At the number four spot now, we have life insurance. This one comes from Cotton Weasel, who said, I have a second cousin that murdered his siblings and parents for insurance money. He didn't get away with it, but only spent around 20 years in prison. He's out now, but no one talks about him or will speak to him. The only reason I even know is my parents warn me if he ever reaches out to me that I shouldn't talk to him. I managed to find out about him and what happened by Googling him. Unreal. I mean, for me personally, unless something awful has happened, there should never be a good reason to kill your parents and siblings. I actually can't think of any reason off the top of my head. That's pretty obvious for normal people, but to do it because of life insurance money, that's insane. I'm glad to hear that he got locked up, but yeah, I do think 20 years might not be enough for slaughtering a whole family in cold blood. Someone in the comments section of this story replied by saying, if he does contact you, the first thing you tell them is, I don't have any life insurance. That's some, uh, that's some good, but also quite dark, humorous advice there. Moving on to the number three spot now, guys, we have the uncle. This one comes from Dogma3721, who said, an uncle I've never met, my mom's brother, killed my mom's parents when he was 16 in a fit of rage and burnt down their home in an attempt to cover it up. I've never met him as he has been in jail on a life sentence since before I was born. I was only informed of his existence because my dad was blackmailing my mom with this. I mean, aside from it being scary, this story is just tragic. It's tragic enough to know that your grandparents were murdered and you never got to meet them, especially when you find out that it was your own uncle who did it. I bet it's even more horrifying for the storyteller's mum, especially now that the dad is apparently blackmailing her with this. I mean, that's a pretty scummy thing to do, as if she hasn't already been through enough in her life. Sorry, this is uh, supposed to be a scary video, and now I'm just angrily ranting about things. At the number two spot now, we have the past life. This is just strange on every level. See if you can follow along with it. Someone on Reddit said, in 1976, my father was in the military and traveled to Guatemala after an earthquake. During the cleanup, he was at the Mayan site of Mixco Viejo. There were several burial sites overturned there. For some reason, unknown to me, he brought back the remains of a female Mayan Indian. He claimed to have loved her in a past life. These remains are still in the box in our attic. They are mostly dust now with a part of the skull left. My father died in 1986, so I cannot ask him about it. My mother and sisters claimed her ghost followed them wherever they moved until my dad died. I am skeptical of that claim. I also have a half-brother in Puerto Rico who is in his 30s that I will never meet. I only know his name is Ricky and my dad had a fling with a Puerto Rican woman while stationed there in the army sometime in the 70s. Okay, breathe. There's a lot to break down there. I think taking the remains of a stranger from their homeland is very strange as it is, probably illegal too, but his family didn't even do anything when he came back with that. I know they said they didn't know, but 
Now they do, and the remains are apparently still just sitting there in the attic. Weird. As for the last bit of the story, someone else pointed out that pop star Ricky Martin was born in Puerto Rico in the 1970s. Could it be him? And finally, number one now, we have Chucky. Disclaimer for this one, guys, this is pretty disturbing. Beastie J said, My mother told me a story about being at a small funeral in the late 1950s in East Texas. The deceased was mentally challenged, and the family was relieved to have the child at peace. During the service, the coffin began to rock, and crying was heard. Then, she was taken outside and watched as the coffin was carried to the cemetery next to the church and hurriedly buried. I was telling my kids this story years later and my mother walked into the room, listened for a moment and asked, are you telling them about Uncle Chucky? Okay, I honestly didn't even know whether or not to include this. I was back and forth for about 10 minutes. It's horrifying. I'm really hoping this story isn't actually real. I'm hoping it's very exaggerated or maybe their mother was just messing around with them. This is really shocking stuff. Did this family really bury their mentally challenged son alive? Personally, I don't think so. I think even with the different attitudes of the 1950s, this is still the stuff of horror and fiction rather than real life and fact. I mean, it's my job to just present people's stories as they are told. But yeah, I want to hear if you guys think this one is legit. And I want to hear your thoughts on everything we've talked about today. Maybe you can even share one of your own family secrets. Nothing too dark though, please. Let's keep the comments section very light. We'll save the dark ones for a potential part two, if that's what you want. Until then, thanks for watching. As always guys, my name is Danny Burke and I will see you all in the next one.